Hey everyone, welcome to the Safetyologist podcast, where we talk all about the safety profession. I'm your host, Gary Marsh, and in today's episode, we will be talking about how I got started in the safety profession. How did the Navy set me on this path to the to be being a safety professional? An air crew survival equipment technician is not your typical path to the safety profession. Before I get started on my story though, I'd like to talk to you about how one decision can change the trajectory of your of the rest of your life. This is very important for you to understand when you start working in the safety profession or embark on the journey of creating a safety program in your business. So here is just a brief bit of time in my story. The very day I stepped off the bus into the Great Lakes region, I began to regret my decision to join the Navy. Looking back, it's been 35 years and counting since that day, and I may have regretted the decision, but it was definitely the best decision of my life. I met my wife a couple of weeks after checking into my first command. We've now been together just as long. We have three kids, and as of this podcast, seven grandkids with number seven being in the oven. Pretty amazing. This all came from one decision. Isn't it amazing how one decision can change the trajectory of your life? That's how I see the safety profession. If I can change just one person's thinking about safety, then I have achieved something great. The problem is though, I did this once and I became hooked. It's essentially um, become my drug of choice. Yeah, I know, weirdo, right? Maybe. So, but this is my story. (laughs) Anyway, when I joined the Navy, my choice uh, of the job wasn't all that great. In fact, being ADHD, my scores were really low. Hell, I thought I must have been one of the dumbest mofos joining the Navy at the time. Of course, the recruiter kind of helped that along. All I knew was my fat butt wanted to become a Navy SEAL. (laughs) I still still laugh at that even today. Well, that never happened, obviously. And even though I did manage to apply seven times, though, that's a long story in itself. Anyway, the recruiter had a good laugh and decided I would be good as a parachute rigger. That's the short term for aircrew survival equipment technician. That's a long time for a job or a long name for a job, right? Well, I made it through boot camp barely and was off to A school. A school was in Lakehurst, New Jersey. Let me tell you something. Lakehurst, New Jersey is a crazy place. We went to Philly a couple of times too, and that's where I got the scar on my face. I got a little too drunk one night and thought I was bulletproof. Got an ass whooping from a parking lot block the size of a hand chunk of concrete. If you want to know more about my crazy life, you should hit me up on YouTube where I do video podcasts on my life. It's more of a documentary for my family mostly, but you can get a lot from an old extreme sports guy like me. Maybe. Uh, I still had no idea I was learning how to become a safety person. I pretty much thought that At the time, I was just becoming a seamstress. I was really pretty pissed off at the recruiter. Now, when I look back, it was a great job, and I have no regrets other than the fact that I didn't really get career motivated until I was about 10 years into the Navy. I was that dumbass. Yep. Anyway, after A school, I got orders to my first command. Oh, missed a pretty important part of my decision. In A school, I was only one of 13 students in my class who wanted sea duty straight away. Heck, I joined the military to see the world. Why start out on shore duty, and especially in Lemoore, California? 
makes me sick just thinking about it. I was raised just down the road in a place called Tulare. Now there's a place you never really want to visit. Just drive through and hold your nose. <laughs> it's, it's dairy land. Enough said. Anyway, I received orders to Whidbey Island, Washington, and that is where I met my wife, Vicki. So I went to work on air crew survival equipment. What that really means is I took care of the pilot's PPE in civilian terms. I dealt with their oxygen systems, parachutes, emergency oxygen systems, survival equipment, G-suits, parachutes, harnesses, and even worked on aircraft oxygen bottles, those nasty green bottles that can overpressurize and explode when you're testing them. So without going too far down this rabbit hole, I was a safety professional. I finished off my career working in special operations by working in air operations for EOD MU-11. And EOD MU-11 is Explosive Ordnance Disposal Mobile Unit 11. I never made it to special operations to be a SEAL, but I did make it to the community. My favorite and craziest time in the Navy, period. And also when I became the most motivated sailor was at EOD. Uh, I ended up packing roughly 10,000 plus parachutes in about four years. That's an inevitably why I ended up with carpal tunnel surgery in both hands. I ended up jumping out of the, a perfectly good aircraft 250 times, and yes, I did get hurt too. I broke my hip on a jump that also caused damage to my neck and back. That was towards the end of my tour with MU-11, and so I ended up getting new orders to flight physiology. Flight physiology is where I really learned how to teach in front of a class of students. I found that I loved it. Now, I'm not an extrovert. In fact, if you ask those who know me, they'd tell you I'm a loner. But I don't have any problem talking in front of people. I am also ADHD, and that makes some people think that I'm extroverted. So with that mental disorder, I can really get nutty. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I get pretty wacko sometimes, which you may hear from time to time on the podcast. By the way, I videotape these podcasts as well. And you can put them up on YouTube on the Safetyology channel. And sorry, I put them up on the YouTube channel called Safetyology. So if you want to watch once in a while, by all means, head over to YouTube and go to my playlist. That's where you'll find my podcast playlist. Watch them all. Like them all, too. <laughs> what, what, do they, what do they usually say in the, uh, oh, it'll help the algorithm. I, I don't care about that. Just like them. If you don't like them, hit the down arrow and tell me why you don't like them so I can fix the problem. Anyway, I learned how to put together training programs and teach all the while going back to school myself. I ended up getting my bachelor's in organizational leadership. And that was from the University of Chapman, or Chapman University. And I did it in three years. Thanks to my wife for sure. I would have never finished if it wasn't for her. That's where I learned to write reports. Not bragging here, but I, I did finish cum laude with a 3.71 grade point average. Not bad for a dumb guy who joined the Navy 20 years prior to my graduation. Along the way in my career, I made a lot of friends. And when I was in charge, I really took care of my sailors. I really paid, it, and it really paid off as you will hear in a moment. I wrote a book called Safetyology, pretty cool. And in the backstory, I talk more about how we started creating live training sessions. We used a dunker for simulated water landings and created stormy conditions in an Olympic-sized pool. It was a blast, and the students loved the training. That particular training ended up going fleet-wide, across the Navy, and that was pretty cool. It was not my idea, mind you, but our training was pretty instrumental in the early days. We also started up a survival program, too, and that was something that I created while I was there. We would steal pilots and aircrew off the flight line and take them up to the mountains, drop them off, and make them survive for 24 hours. They could only use what they had on them. The survival vest had plenty for them to survive, and they were trained to use it, and they were trained well. They also went through SEER school, which is an impressive school just to go through all in itself. 
That was an incredibly fun part of the job. We had to arrange several safety systems. In civilian terms, we had to do risk assessments for each of the training sessions we completed. It started on a flight line, then we, then at the drop off, and finally the extraction. The extraction was by far the most critical and least safe part of this training. We would put air crew in some pretty precarious places and then search and rescue would fly in and pluck them out of the forest. We would put them on you know, the edges of uh, canyons and in trees and just all over the place. And it was really, really cool to watch search and rescue. And those guys were amazing how they could pluck them right out of anywhere we put them. I get super motivated just reliving the past and it was really fun. Those days went by fast before I knew it. I was graduating college and retiring from the Navy in the same week. You couldn't time that any better. It, it was great. <laughs> I, I am retired from the Navy. So now what? Remember what I said earlier about being good to people? Well, it pays to be good to others. So what do I mean by that? This is how I got my first safety job after retiring from the Navy. I led all the instructors in flight physiology and there was a, uh, there was one particular gris disgruntled sailor who fully intended on getting out after four years. Man, I tried really hard to keep this kid in and I was really good to him. Not just because, you know, I wanted to keep him in the Navy. I just really genuinely liked this kid and he was a good, really, really good instructor. And I just wanted to capitalize on that and keep him on that path. Anyway, I failed at keeping him in, but uh, gained an advocate once I retired. He reached out to me a couple of, on a couple of occasions uh, just to put applications to the, into this company that he worked for. I kept blowing him off, kind of. You know, I would talk to him, but really I was, I was still in the Navy and had about a year to go. I still stayed in touch with him. And when I was about three months from Navy retirement, he reached out to me again and he told me to apply again. And so finally I did. That essentially started my path as a safety professional in the real world. I worked in that company for over four years and was promoted two times in that period. I was hired as a safety officer, then promoted to a safety coach, and then finally to a safety advisor. I went from having no knowledge of the oil industry to advising other countries in our company's safety programs. I started out in the training program on what's called the Mr. Charlie Rig, and this was for Sea Drill, the company, when it first started up. And that was in Morgan City, Louisiana. Once I went through the program, I then became a liaison for the program to the Houston office and the leadership team. After that, it was off to Singapore where I had three drill rigs getting built. And they, I say I, but we had, they were all getting commissioned in a 12 month period. I had helped uh, setting up the safety programs in the very early stages. I also went from the rigs from Singapore to their respective countries once commissioned. And then, you know, it was a really fantastic job to be able to go all over the country and meet people from every parts of the world and train them in our safety systems. I learned a ton about the safety profession, and I'd like to say that I was drinking from a fire hydrant for the entire first two years in that company. I went on for another two years, traveling pretty much all over the world, setting up rigs and offices in several different countries. I also learned how to um, how cutthroat people can be too, and that's a story for another day, mind you. But anyway. Once I was no longer required in this particular company, I set out on a crazy journey that led to my career in several different industries. Before I get into that, though, I must say that traveling over 100,000 miles a year can cause some pretty significant problems to the body. Aircraft ergonomics is not the best for frequent travelers. In fact, the early days of flying coach absolutely sucked. I hated that part until I would 
automatically get upgraded to business class. That's when things drastically improved. Well, no longer needed left a bad taste in my mouth. I decided to try my hand at uh, the, avi a the aviation industry. I started working on a contract on the very base I retired from, which at first was really cool. I set up the entire safety program for the contract and was bored quite quickly after about a year or so. Don't get me wrong, it was a great job. I just needed a faster paced job. I, I left there and went several went into several other industries. I did work in construction, education, recycling, transportation, aerospace, manufacturing, and I even did warehouse safety. I am what you would probably call the safety jack of all trades and master of none. I kind of disagree with that, mind you, but I actually found that there are many similarities in all the industries I've been involved with. As a matter of fact, I was able to create a program I could easily plug into any job I started, regardless, tweak it a little bit, and set the plan in motion, and still easily put things together into the safety program. Uh, it's, it's still not easy to put together safety programs, so let me, let me be clear with that. It is a difficult job to do. I made it as easy as I possibly could for myself to get up and running quickly, then uh, the reason that I, was, I like getting my safety program in place quickly is so that I can be a safety presence at the job site. Just being visible like that is enough to change the culture just a little bit to help curb the incident rate in that particular company. I put this program into a book called Safetyology, the art and science of developing safety in your business. The safetyologist, that's, that's what we call ourselves in the book. And this is my microphone set up just so you guys understand. Um, I'm using GarageBand here. And actually my cameras are two GoPro cameras. So <laughs> pretty interesting, right? Anyway, I wrote the book called uh, safetyology and you know what I like to think of individuals who create and build off of the safetyology program I, I refer to them as safetyologists I can't believe I wrote a book it's not many can say they've written a book on their profession now my, my book is not quite finished yet as it's still in the editing phase the plan is to launch the book in December of this year I'm really excited and also terrified. This book has been uh, a year in the making. I've taken all my binders and notes and put them all into a book you can actually read. That's so cool to me anyway. Uh, being ADHD and trying to maintain focus on one project is really, really, really hard. I've written the book and then rewrote it a few times in, you know, different areas of that book and it's been a long road uh, now that I'm just about done with this one I've already got another one planned for 2023 so why the podcast to be honest I started it to gain traction for my book but once I started writing this first podcast episode I began to realize I can help even more people so this podcast started out selfishly, mind you, but quickly before I got this first episode out, uh, the mindset shifted to my normal self of just wanting to help people. Safetyology has 16 chapters that covers each area you will need in, um, in order to develop a complete safety management system. I didn't want the book to be like all the other safety books and written for other safety professionals because you know that's what they do. I created it to be as short as possible and offer up just the information you need to build a safety program in any small to medium sized business. It's literally just a roadmap you can use that will, that will guide you down the path the quickest way. At least that's my opinion. Safety professionals can use the book as well. I can probably say with confidence right now that I will have a lot of safety professionals saying the book may be lacking in information and they would be right to a degree. 
there is a ton of information on safety. The book was written in a way to get the new safety professional started quickly. That is it. Now that the book has been written, I can always refer back to it, update it, and create more content around it. So the book will give you just the information you need to create your safety program. This podcast will be able to go into further details and open up a whole dialogue on safetyology. From time to time, though, I would love to have guests on the podcast. Other safety professionals, by all means, can give even further insight into the safety profession. Wouldn't it be great if we had a place where all safety pros can come and get good information to help them along with their in their career? Well, that brings us to the end of this safetyologist episode. I hope you enjoyed learning about where I came from and what this podcast is going to be about. Tune in to our episode next week when we will be chatting all about being at risk for burnout and what you can do to help others when they are experiencing burnout as well. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm at uh, on Facebook, gary.marsh.7. And Instagram, I'm at GaryMarsh54. My YouTube channel is Safetyology. Also, I usually give a recap of the topics discussed in my videos, and we'll probably do the same here in the podcast. However, today's podcast is really just a podcast for you to get to know who I am and what this podcast is going to be about. If you ever have a topic you would like to discuss or would like to be on the podcast, reach out to me and let's set something up. Also, if it's only a question or a topic, leave me a comment over on the YouTube Safetyology channel. It's the easiest way for you to get a hold of me. Um, remember, this podcast is all about the safety profession. There will be a ton of stories added in the coming months. If you like this podcast, please like and subscribe as we post a new podcast weekly. Also, if you're looking for a great safety book, then take a look and buy Safetyology, the art and science of developing safety in your business. That's it for today. We will talk again next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.